And that's absolutely wrong. He's wrong. And it's giving bad advice to people and it's making people not want to take a blood pressure medication. So all the good he did in this video was completely undone. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle rant. Today's topic is how to protect your heart and kidneys. It's a big topic now. A lot of people die in heart attacks. A lot of people have kidney disease in our industry. Some of it's self-induced, some of it's genetic. We're gonna talk about how to protect your body. Something that no one talked about when I was competing because no one really knew. You know why? Because there were no auto-inflate blood pressure cuffs, you had to have the little squeeze thing and a stethoscope and you can't take your own blood pressure when you do that, it's very hard. So no one did it. There were no blood sugar monitors, only type 1 diabetics had them and they were super expensive. We didn't have that. There were no cardiac CT scans, you can check your coronary arteries out, see if you have a blockage. People just didn't know. Yeah, they had some ultrasounds you can do, they had blood work. But no one really understood what was going on. And we really didn't want to know. And there was no knowledge, there was no internet, so there wasn't a lot of people talking about it. You know, you went to the doctor and they told you, you know, as a body below, oh, your blood works bad. And, you know, most people didn't really know how to advise you. Luckily, I had a doctor friend who was a bodybuilder himself. And he would interpret my blood work for me and tell me what to be concerned about, what not to be concerned about. But let's face it. I probably should have been taking a blood pressure medication in my whole bodybuilding career. Luckily, most of the, my career where I was my heaviest, I was in my 20s. And it seems like your body's a little more resilient when you're in your 20s, early 30s. It's when you start getting into the, the 30s and then obviously 40s that that's when your body's not as resilient. Now, the question is, you know, kidney health. I saw a podcast recently where... Fuad Abiyad was on Lex Lewis's podcast. Nick Tregilli did a video on it as well, um, showcasing it. And, and Fuad, for the first time, you know, opened up about the fact that he has kidney disease. Uh, that was probably self-induced, he says, by you know, high blood pressure. He was diagnosed with high blood pressure 10 years earlier, and he just didn't do anything about it because the doctor made it seem as though he wasn't going to be able to bodybuild anymore, which is obviously not the case. And... He never took a blood pressure medication and he had high blood pressure for, you know, eight years and it's the silent killer. That's why they call it that. You don't know it's doing damage because you don't feel anything. But little by little, it damages your kidneys. And why does it do that? Well, what are, the, what are the kidneys? The kidneys are basically a filtering mechanism. They filter the blood. They take out the bad stuff. They get rid of it through your urine and the good stuff you keep. But this filter is really not a big filter. It's, it's a lot of little teeny tiny filters that functionally work together to detoxify your body. Um, the problem is that these filters are, are kind of fragile. So if the, if the pressure of blood going through these filters, which is your blood pressure essentially, is too high, they damage the, the tubules. In other words, they damage the, it's like, it's like throwing your phone against the wall. You throw it against the wall enough, it's going to break, right? Same thing with these kidney tubules. If you keep banging them with very high pressures all the time, and I'm not talking about the high pressure you get from a workout. I'm talking about 24 hours a day, hammering them with high blood pressure. Eventually, they break. And if you break enough of them, what happens is you start to notice that when you go for blood work, your creatinine levels, which is the waste product in your blood, okay, it starts going higher and higher and higher. Why? Because the kidneys can't keep up with the demand to filter the blood. Because we're, let's face it, bodybuilders eat a high protein diet, which makes the, the kidneys have to work harder to begin with. And they can handle that. There's no problem with that. And then we break down a lot of muscle tissue in the gym, which causes the kidneys to have to deaminate and break all that stuff down as well, which puts more stress on them. And then if you're putting high blood pressure on them, which is damaging them, they can't do their job. You, you're taking away, it's like you're, it's like you have a cleanup crew and, and you, know, you take away half the crew and you, know, you, you can't clean the stadium anymore, you know, because 
it's just not enough people on hand. You know, you, they need more time, you know. So you can't have as many people into the stadium if, you, if you're not going to have the same cleanup crew, right? So same thing with, you know, you can't eat as much protein. You can't break down as much protein if you're not going to have as much kidney available to filter all the waste. Hopefully that analogy makes sense to you. So the key is, number one, not to destroy these kidney tubules, but we all destroy them over the course of time. As we get older, we destroy them, I mean, just, just from living. But we have so many of them that it's like brain cells. Yeah, you, you destroy brain cells too, but you have so many of them. But if you do things that exacerbate or make the brain cells die faster, smoking, doing drugs and stuff like that, you know, you, you, might, <laughs> you might get the early dementia. You know, and we've seen it in, in people who have drug problems or even people get punched in the head too much. What happens to fighters who get hit in the head too much? They get what we call punch drunk, right? It's damaging of the neurons in their brain, and they don't have enough. But let's get back to kidneys. Kidneys respond to blood pressure. So if blood pressure is too high, it damages them. If you go to the, the doctor and, you're, and your creatinine levels, okay, and there's basically two measures of kidney function that we get done on a routine basis. One is called creatinine, not creatine, don't confuse the two. This is the waste product, creatinine. And the other one is BUN, or blood urea nitrogen. The, the amount of uh, nitrogen in the blood that's caused by the breakdown of protein. Blood urea nitrogen, BUN, can, can be very, very fickle because sometimes it elevates in, uh, in the face of dehydration. Now, when most of us go for blood work, they tell you to fast, right? So you don't eat or drink anything since the night before. You go in there and give blood work, you're invariably dehydrated. So a lot of times BUN will be high. That's not such a big deal. I wouldn't even worry about BUN. But creatinine is really not susceptible to dehydration. It doesn't really change much if you're a little dehydrated. So that's a good uh, measure of how well your kidneys are filtering waste. Usually the high normal is 1.35 on, uh, on the American scale, at least, because I know there's different units in different countries. On the American scale, it's 1.35. You don't want to go higher than that. Some, some of these uh, ranges they give are only go up to 1.25, but really, for bodybuilding purposes, for big guys, 1.35 is, is, is still safe. What if you come back and you're 1.5 or 1.7 or 1.8? What does that mean? Does that mean you've destroyed your kidney? No, it doesn't mean that. It means the kidneys are under stress, okay? Whether it's because you're eating too much protein, you're training too hard, you're taking too many drugs, you have blood pressure, or a combination of everything, something's going, something's causing them to not work so well. Now, the first thing I tell people to do before panicking is ask your doctor to test you for something called cystatin C. Cystatin C is another... Uh, measure of kidney function. And it's much more accurate for uh, the true function of kidneys. It's not a standard test that they do for everyone, but they could check the box on the form and they can check it for you. It's a separate test. The thing about cystatin C is if that comes back normal and your creatinine's high, it probably means your kidneys are not damaged. They're probably working well. It just means that they could be a little overwhelmed. You might have been, you might have been too dehydrated or, or you know, maybe just came off a show or you, had a, you were sick. There are other things that can raise creatinine, but if cystatin C comes back high, in addition to the creatinine being high, you probably have kidneys that are being stressed out in some capacity. The good news is that the kidneys can regenerate. They don't regenerate as quickly or as well as the liver does, but they regenerate. It just takes longer. So if you wanted to restore kidney function from a 1.7, for instance, which is high, down to a 1.3, which would be normal, it might take two, three, four, five, six months to do that, following the protocol I'm going to give you in a second. If you don't address it, however, and you let that go unchecked, and the 1.7 goes up to 1.8, 1.9, 2.0, now, now you're getting into dangerous range. Because at some point, the damage starts to become permanent. And the way it becomes permanent is that the body lays down scar tissue, connective tissue, to stabilize this, these damaged uh, kidney uh, filtering apparati, also known as the glomerular apparatus. Um, when this glomerulus uh, starts breaking down, and, and too many of them do, the body has to just, you know, basically, it wants to keep everything glued together, so it uses scar tissue <laughs> to do that, which is not good, because once it does that, those things are never coming back. Uh, we don't want that to happen. 
that's that's why if you go for an ultrasound, a kidney ultrasound, you might see some. They might notice some sclerotic damage, or, or the laying down of sclerotic tissue. It might be you know explained as that means that you have some scarring on your on your kidneys from you know damage that you've done over the years. Doesn't also mean that you can't restore kidney function. Okay, number one, you want to get on a blood pressure medication. Matter of fact. You know, when I first started training and taking testosterone, the first thing that they, they told you to do was take an estrogen blocker. At the time, it was an estrogen receptor blocker, and Olvidex, and that's all they had. Then it became the aromatase inhibitor, like Arimidex, Femara, Aromacin. Standard thing. You go on testosterone, you take this so you don't get estrogen production. Why, as bodybuilders, we don't, as soon as we notice high blood pressure, go on a blood pressure medication, you know, knowing that if we're taking a cycle, we're retaining extra fluid, that usually raises blood pressure. So sometimes... We're raising blood pressure just by the token of, of, of adding more fluid into the, into the milieu or more red blood cells. Some people think if I donate red blood cells, they're going to drop their blood pressure. That never works. It's the fluid component of the, of the bloodstream that's increased, okay, that's causing the higher blood pressure. It's not the cells themselves. It's not the red blood cells. So donating blood, you know, will drop your blood pressure for six hours until your body, you know, rehydrates itself and then you're going to be back to the same position. It's not always caused by anabolics. Some people just from having more weight on their body and carrying that around is going to cause, you know, higher blood pressure. And some people are just genetically susceptible to high blood pressure. I found that I really didn't have to deal with high blood pressure issues until I got into my 30s. And then I started noticing that I was running higher blood pressures than that I was in my 20s. And I wasn't even as heavy because that's what happens as we get older, unfortunately. With the blood vessel walls lose their elasticity and they can't dilate and constrict as easily and they become stiff, stiff in blood vessels. Um, call that art arteriosclerosis, that just happens as we get older. And because of that, a lot of times our blood pressure um, suffers and it goes up. Taking a class of blood pressure meds known as ACE inhibitors are the most time tested and probably the, the safest with the least side effects I've found over the years. Ramipril is something what I take. I take five milligrams of Ramipril twice a day. Ramipril, lisinopril, which is kind of like a generic form of that. There are a couple of them out there that are really good. They have no side effects. You know, you're not going to take a high dose anyway. Number one, it's they're kidney protective too because they dilate the vessels of the kidney, allowing more blood flow into those kidney tubules so they can filter better. So not only is it lowering your blood pressure and lowering the pressure on the kidneys, but it's actually allowing the kidneys to filter better. So it's a really good blood pressure medication, no side effects. I know a lot of people nowadays are taking angiotensin receptor blockers um, like uh, telemosartan, valsartan, and those are fine. They work pretty much by the same mechanism, but you know they haven't been around as long, they haven't been as tested as long, and they did do some studies where uh, some people got cancer recently um, in, in a study. They found that they might increase the risk of it. And you know, since I have cancer in my family, I don't even want to mess with those. Doesn't mean you're going to get it, it just means that be aware that ACE inhibitors have been around longer. It doesn't, they both do the same thing with, with pretty much no side effects. Um, the calcium channel blockers that they give and diuretics are really not um, blood pressure medications that bodybuilders want to use. Same thing goes for beta blockers, not really a great bodybuilding drug. You don't want to block calcium channels, you know, because uh, we're using our muscles that use calcium to contract. So that's not a great idea. A lot of people get swelling in their legs from using those. So those don't work really well for bodybuilders. Likewise, you don't want to use a diuretic because it messes up your electrolytes. And that's not going to help. The only people who should take diuretics are people who can't be controlled using ACE inhibitors. And sometimes, some people's just their heart's not functioning well and they need to flush extra water out of their body. And they just need that. But usually that's not something that a younger person would need to take. And sometimes doctors just knee-jerk and put you on these things. I would not take a diuretic if, if you can avoid it. Okay, that's not a good way to control blood pressure. Um, plus, you walk around dehydrated. We know that muscle cells like to be well hydrated. It puts them in an anabolic state. Dehydrated muscle cells are catabolic in a state of breakdown. So get on an ACE inhibitor okay, right away. Okay? If you, even if you have borderline high blood pressure. You know, they used to be the old 180 over 20. Now they're saying 175 over, over um, 75 is a better, uh, or 115, I should say, over 75 is a better blood pressure. I think for guys that are really big, if you can get down to 120 over 80, I think you're fine. Um, but if, you, if you're teetering one eight, at 85 or up to 90 on the lower number, if you're going 135, 140, 150 on the top number, 
get on, get on an ACE inhibitor. That's the first thing. Second thing, if you do have some damage or you do have high uh, levels of creatinine, you should do my three-week detox program that I give out for free. You can reach out to me. And one of the things in there is the kidney stuff product the, that I recommend. I don't make this stuff, um, but I, I've used it successfully with a lot of people, myself included, over the years, and it works really effectively. So I sell it just because I believe in the product. And that's at my DavePalumbo.com website. I sell it cheaper than anyone out there because I, I buy it in bulk because that's how good this stuff is. All right, you take two months of this stuff. I actually mix it right into my fiber lines and just drink the two of them together. And it's really good because, once again, it reduces the inflammation around the kidney tubules, allowing blood flow to get into that, uh, blood to flow into the kidneys and get filtered much more easily. Uh, a lot of what happens around those kidneys is because they're, they're being damaged. You get tremendous amounts of inflammation. It pinches off the vessels. You can't get good blood flow in there. You don't get good filtering. And that's when creatinine goes up. Also, likewise, if you have too much inflammation around the kidneys, it, it's much more likely you're going to get scar tissue uh, being laid down there. And we don't want that, right? Because that permanently disables that part of the kidney. So use the kidney stuff for at least, you know, two bags, which is 60 days. You know, I would do that after every cycle you do just to kind of clean yourself out, give the kidneys a break, detoxify them a little bit. And I think you're going to find that your, your creatinine levels will come down. Also, any of the um, anti-inflammatory type fatty acids that, that I'm always talking about, uh, a product like my Omega Lyse formula, you know, has a very high quality of a pharmaceutical fish oil in there, which also reduces inflammation in the body. And specifically, if the kidneys are being taxed, in that area. Likewise, you want to use oils like macadamia oil or extra virgin olive oil. These are um, really good monounsaturated fats that, once again, will help reduce inflammation in the body and, and, and really save those kidneys. So if you do all that, you do the detox, you lower your protein for you know about three weeks just while you're doing the detox program. And if you look at the detox, it has, all that information's in there. I don't, you don't have to write all that down. You can just get it from me if you want. A lot of people have already requested it and I've sent it to them. If you follow that, I guarantee you, your, your creatinine is gonna go down. Now, like I said, the detox is three weeks. It might take six, eight, 10 weeks to get your creatinine levels into normal range. It depends how high you are. If you're only 1.45 or something like that, which is slightly high, you're probably in three weeks, you'll probably be down to normal range. But if you're like 1.7 or 1.6, it could take, you know, four or five months to get that back to normal. That doesn't mean you need to eat low protein all that time, but you do should stay on the kidney stuff. You should stay on all the good essential fatty acids. Should, you know, and, and you don't want to overdrink. That's one thing about kidney, also kidney issues. People think, oh, I gotta flush my kidneys with a lot of water. No, because what you're doing is you're making them work harder, having to get rid of all that fluid from your body. So you don't want to overdrink. That's a big misnomer. A lot of people think flush with water. No, no. We're trying to give the kidneys a break. It doesn't mean you should be dehydrated, but don't overdrink. Okay. Trust me. Plus you'll water down your electrolytes too much. So nothing excessive, but you can reverse this. And that's why if every year you do the detox at the end of the year, or you at least do some kidney stuff and, you know, maybe drop your protein down a little bit. If, if you are having higher, you know, kidney function test, higher creatinine, if your cystatin C is high, that's going to save you. Now, I just saw a, a video recently, someone had sent me the link to it, uh, Nick Tregilli was talking about this very topic. Nick Tregilli is talking about Fuad's interview he did, and he's giving advice now on blood pressure and heart health. And he's reading from Wikipedia or for some website out there what the, the advantages and disadvantages of blood pressure medications are, but, but no, no relevant application to what is actually going on here, okay? In bodybuilders, we know why we have high blood pressure. I already laid it out for you. Taking a blood pressure medication will take the pressure off the kidneys, off the heart, and off the brain. We know that. Not Nick. This is what Nick thinks. So yes, the blood pressure medicines could have helped Fuad alleviate the issue temporarily, until he got to the root problem, but he couldn't have just continued the bodybuild for eight years on blood pressure medicine and be like, oh, I'm fine now and I'm retiring with no issues because yeah, he would have protected his kidneys temporarily, but then he would have a heart attack, or at least I think so. And that's absolutely wrong. He's wrong and it's giving bad advice to people and it's making people not want to take a blood pressure medication. So all the good he did in this video was completely undone 
by this part of the video where he actually gives his opinion, which in this instance is, is terrible because he doesn't really have a medical background and he's making up stuff that has absolutely no relevancy to the bodybuilder and to high blood pressure and to kidney health and to heart health because high blood pressure affects all the organs negatively. We don't want the heart to have high pressure on it, just like we don't want the kidneys to have high pressure and we don't want the brain to have high pressure on it because all three of those organs will be damaged by it. So yes, a blood pressure medication would have saved Fuad's kidneys, it would have alleviated pressure on his heart and on his brain during that eight years that he could have possibly taken them and he would have been healthier for that. And I'm sure he wishes he would have taken it. So Nick shouldn't be giving advice about things that he doesn't really know about. Stick to your opinions because lowering your blood pressure is better for your heart, okay? It takes the pressure. Remember, if you have high pressure in the system, the heart is having to push really hard to pump that blood out, okay, at that level. And what's, what's happening is you're getting back pressure into the heart. When you get pressure back into the heart and the heart has to fight against that pressure, it has to enlarge itself and thicken the walls to try to get the blood pumped to the whole body. That makes the heart get bigger and get thicker. And that's not good because that can, that can cause major problems. Also, if you're pumping too much blood up to the, up to the brain, you can, you, know, you, can, you can cause you know, <laughs> strokes and stuff like that. So you want to keep blood pressure low, okay? Whether you take a blood pressure med or, or you lose 100 pounds, that's up to you. But that's going to help the kidneys. It's going to help the brain. It's going to help all your organs pretty much, including the liver, anything where blood goes through it, but it's going to help your heart too. So taking a blood pressure medication is important to the heart as, as much as it is to the kidneys. So don't let anyone tell you that, oh, you should try to figure out what's causing the, 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 the high blood pressure. Well, we know it's causing the high blood pressure, okay? You weigh 300 pounds, okay? You might be getting a little older. Your elasticity of your vessels might have, you know, diminished and you have less ability to open and close your vessels. And you might have a family uh, predisposition. So there's no sense in suffering and losing your kidneys because you don't want to take a blood pressure medication. That's ridiculous, okay? Not likewise, you're saving multiple organs, including your heart, by taking a blood pressure medication and taking that burden off the heart. We're just dilating the vessels, okay? We're opening up the ability for the body to filter blood better, okay? And you're taking that back pressure burden off of the heart. And that's the most important thing. And once you do this, you alleviate all the problems that you're gonna have um, from having high blood pressure. Because let's face it, you know, bodybuilding's, a, you know, we eat a pretty healthy diet, you know, most of us do. We don't have a lot of body fat. We work out, so we're in good shape and we have an athletic heart. The problem is that we are bigger than the average person. And being bigger, you're gonna have more pressure on the organs to have to do what they do best the colon, the pancreas, the liver, to digest all that food we're eating, right? Uh, the beta cells of the pancreas to produce enough insulin to absorb all those carbs. The kidneys to filter all that protein waste, not only from the food we're eating, but from the breakdown of muscle tissue on a daily basis. So we have to give the body some help in order to do that, especially if we're going to continue to do this for years and years. I mean, the simple solution would be don't, don't bodybuild, right? But that's not an option because this is what we love to do. It's like telling a rock climber, don't climb a mountain. But I love climbing mountains, but it's too risky. You're going to fall and kill yourself. But, you know, you can climb a mountain in, in a safe way by having the right ropes and attachments. You know, you see these guys who scale these mountains, John Romano and I were talking about this, with no equipment. Those guys are nuts. That's, you know, that's absolutely insane because one slip, you fall and you die. I mean, but that's up to them. If they want to do that, that's fine. Just like if you don't want to take a blood pressure medication and you don't care if, you know, you lose your kidneys, then great. But, but you can climb the mountain safely and you can be a bodybuilder safely if you just take a lot of the advice that I'm giving you on a daily basis into your head and utilize it. There's, there is a safe way to do things, okay? There's always risk involved, okay? Anything you do at a very high elite level, okay, or an extreme level, is going to have risk associated with it. I was talking about this the other day. I mean, boxers get in the ring, MMA fights, they're punching the crap out of each other. Of course it's dangerous. Can anyone die? You could die at any moment. You can die from any single punch hitting you in the wrong way at the wrong moment in the wrong place. And that's, that's, just, that's just life. 
Look at that football player. Thank God he, he was fine. But he, he took a weird hit and he almost died right on the field there. So stuff happens, you know, in life. But we can do is we can minimize the risk by being smart, by knowing our vitals, checking our pulse on a regular basis, checking our blood pressure throughout the day, checking our fasting blood sugars when we wake up in the morning, knowing our numbers like creatinine and NBUN and cystatin C. Uh, you know, it's just, that's just being smart, you know. It could drive you crazy, I'll tell you. I, I, I can admit it because I'm a little OCD on these things. And I start thinking I have everything, you know, in the world wrong with me sometimes because, you know, you start getting in pain and you know too much and you start over-diagnosing too. But there are some basic, you know, baseline levels of blood work and, you know, testing that we can get done from the cardiac CT scan I tell you guys to get to the colonoscopy I tell you to get to check your colon. All these things need to be done, and especially as we get older, because we don't want to get caught by surprise and say, oh, we didn't know if we only took the test, right? If we only checked our blood pressure, if we only took a blood pressure med. You know, Fuad said it right in that video. He said, you know, I was a dummy. I could have avoided all this. Now I'm dealing with the fact that I could lose my kidneys, you know, at some point in the future. And I know he's trying to go for some um, uh, stem cell treatment in Dubai, and I wish him the best because I don't want to see anything bad happen to anyone. Uh, and, you know, he's a good guy and he's, you know, given back to the sport. So hopefully he'll get that taken care of. But that's just, you know, that's just an example of, of what you don't want to wind up doing, you know. He didn't know, you know, back in the day. People didn't talk about this as openly, you know. I, you know, put a lot of information out there, but that doesn't mean people listen. Remember, the students only, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. But before that, the student is not listening, okay? Their ears are closed. They got earmuffs on. And they just don't hear what's going on until they want to hear what's going on. And we're all like that, myself included. Don't, don't think that I'm smarter or better than anyone else. I'm not, because I make all the same dumb mistakes that everyone makes. I'm trying to help you guys avert the mistakes that we made of a previous generation now, because we have a lot of information at our disposal. We've got a smartwatch on our wrist, tells you your heart rate, tells you your oxygen saturation. Pretty soon it'll tell you your blood sugar. I mean, it does everything. You get a, a $9 blood sugar monitor from Walmart. You go to the doctor, you get on a, on a cheap ACE inhibitor. It's 10 bucks a month from the, you know, from the pharmacy. There's no excuse. It's, it's part of the protocol. I mean, you take 15 other pills between vitamins and anti-aromatases and anti-prolactin pills and Winstrel and Anivar and, and God knows what else you, everyone takes. Add it, throw another pill in there. What the, what's the big deal? <laughs> if it's going to protect your organs, you know, your kidneys, your brain, your, your heart, it's worth it. It's worth it. Don't be stupid. Don't be naive. Don't put your head in the sand. Be smart about it. And make sure whoever you're listening to out there knows what they're talking about. Because half of what they're talking about can be dangerous. Okay? Be an educated consumer. Know what you need to do. Ask questions of people. Don't be naive and afraid. There's always a solution to every question. Just ask her the right question. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle rant.